What is up, Packer fans? Back again. It is week 14. We made it to the bye week, but the Packers 2022 NFL season has not gone the way we have expected. They're 5-8. and eight. It seems like the defense kind of didn't live up to the expectations. The offense took longer to get going than they previously expected. Losing Devontae Adams hurt way more than they thought. And the Packers team as a whole, you know, one game, the offense would play well, the defense would struggle. And then the defense would play well, the offense would struggle. And then both offense and defense would play well, and the special teams would struggle. So it's been a tough season to watch. And I did most of this information before the bye week, before the the, the win against the Cowboys, the win against the Bears. Packers were 3-6 and six when I did most of this information, but it still holds true for their 5-8 and eight record. Obviously, going into the bye, they have some hope of teams losing this week and then them coming out their last four games. If they win out, they have a chance. The Rams look like they're going to be starting Baker Mayfield. Dolphins look like they could be tough on Christmas Eve. And then we have the Lions and the Vikings. So, That'll be exciting. We'll see how the Packers can pull this off. If they can get to 9-8, and eight, there might be a chance. The only thing is, is the Commanders and the Giants both have the tiebreakers. So that sucks. That's really tough. But we'll see, you know, if teams lose and they kind of, you know, crash and the Packers can go on a little run here, they might be able to squeak in. It would suck if they won all these games and still didn't make it in because now they're ruining their draft pick. But... All in all, you know, I think the Packers really were able to kind of figure out a little bit about themselves this year. Run the football, you know, use Rodgers when you need to, play action, hit big plays with your young guys, and go that route. But the reason the Packers are 5-8, and eight, it started before this season. And, you know, the last couple of years, they've won 39 games in three seasons, which is just nuts. So... For me, it's it's tough to really put a lot of this blame on you know years past. This is more of what's going on this year. But I think it's all a bunch of things that cultivated into this issue of the Packers' struggles this season. You know, so it started a few years ago when Brian Gutekiss, the Packers GM, drafted Jordan Love. He could have you know got T Higgins. He could have got you know Jonathan Taylor, where he he drafted AJ Dillon in the second round. You know, there was a bunch of guys that he could have went after. I know Debo was a later draft pick. A.J. Brown was a later draft pick. You know, and D.K. Metcalf, Justin Jefferson went 22. We got Love at 26, I think. So there was some areas where the Packers could have made a little bit of a different move, and they would have had a completely different team, a different outcome. You know, when they drafted, they got Gary 12th, Savage 21st, and Jenkins 44th in 2019. And they could have got Debo at 36, A.J. Brown at 51st, and D.K. Metcalf at 64th. So the Packers kind of went defense and offensive line. The year before, they went backup quarterback and running back. So for me, it seems like they're leaning towards wanting to be a defensive team and more of a running team. Then you get rid of Devontae Adams. And now you really look like you're trying to be more of a running team. Then last year, they went and got Eric Stokes in the first round. And guys like Rondale Moore, Elijah Moore, and Amon Ra St. Brown were all available into the second, third, fourth rounds of the draft. Packers selected Josh Myers second, um, second overall that year. Well, not overall, but second round that year in the draft, their second pick. And right before the Chiefs drafted Creed Humphreys, a guy that's basically the best center in the league right now. And the Packers went and got Amari Rodgers in the third round over guys like Amon Ra St. Brown. So all that kind of, you know, built up to the, the Packers just not having the firepower going into this year, relying on a lot of young guys, bringing in a veteran like Sammy Watkins, who has had his injury issues. And we see that he's just not up to, up to it, really. So, you know, the Packers, they obviously... Devontae Adams traded away. MVS, they let go. They, you know, um, Equinemia St. Brown, they let go, which isn't a big deal. But still, you know, they bring it with the draft picks they got from Devontae. They got Devontae Wyatt. They got Christian Watson. So 
something there, but you're still focused on defense. They won defense first round this year. And so this Packers team, with drafting Myers, drafting Jenkins, drafting Dylan, paying Aaron Jones, you'd think your identity would be running the football. You should be wanting to run the football. You know, teams like the Eagles and the Ravens, they know they're running the football. And so the Packers, they needed to be like that. I think it was tough for LaFleur to kind of, you know, you've got Aaron Rodgers, you want to keep throwing it, but you just don't have the guys around him to really excel. So that was tough, you know. After the couple of years of all the success, you kind of just assume the success is going to carry over, but it always it doesn't always do that. And they're learning that the hard way this year, you know. And then obviously some of the issues stem from play calling, you know, against the Giants. They have third and two and fourth and two at the goal line, two passes in a row, both get batted down, end of the game, you know. And there's other instances, but that's the one that I reflect on the most because that's a game that if they had that, they'd be in a way different position. It seems like after that London game, they went on that five-game. I mean, part of that London trip was their five-game losing streak, but just really tough. You know, they had chances against the Lions at the goal line where they threw <laughs> two interceptions and zero points. And, you know, just it comes down to I understand that Rodgers has a lot of freedom at the line, but Matt LaFleur has to come in and be like, okay, this is the play we're running. Make sure we run the football. And he has to stick to it. Know your identity. I think they co- he coaches too much on emotion. You saw that with some of the uh, the challenges he did this year. And I just think that he's just, you know, sometimes he's a little overwhelmed. And I think the, you know, he just, he doesn't, he seems like he's not a super aggressive guy. He's not weak, but just, you know, he doesn't seem like he really goes and is really a forceful, you know, um, speaker or people really want to listen to him and stuff like that. So I'm excited to see, you know, kind of where it goes next year. But some of this stuff, you know, has just really weighed on the Packers. You know, a lot of young guys, they trust, you know, they went after some positions of, of need in the past that are, you know, now they're, you know, cornerback. They have three really good cornerbacks, but they play a zone defense. So now their guys are out of position. So it's really tough just because, you know, you have seven first rounders on the defense. You have Aaron Rodgers. You know, you have David Bakhtiari and Alkin Jenkins, two all pros or pro bowlers on the offensive line. And then, you know, guys like Lazard who want to really step up and prove that they can be a guy. So it's just tough, you know. And throughout the season, there's just been here and there, you know, where there's a play that the Packers have to have, a third down and long that they have to stop in the guys are out of position or, or miss a tackle. And it really just comes down to all the little basics and everything that the Packers aren't doing. Um, people would focus a lot of this on Joe Barry in the defense. What is going on there? If you're playing zone, all your guys are looking at the quarterback. You shouldn't be getting burned in the running game by the quarterback. You shouldn't be getting burned so much in the passing game. Guys shouldn't be running wide open. There should be a guy in every zone, basically, so it shouldn't be an issue. You'd think you'd get burned more in man-to-man just because of crossers and drags. It's hard to keep up with the guys, but that's not really how it's been. It's We get burned in a, on a drag route during a zone coverage, too, so I don't understand what's going on. I guess you know when the Rams had Joe Barry, Jalen Ramsey would complain about what his usage was, and then they fire him, and the Rams win the Super Bowl, so eh, I don't know, but you'd think that with the defense on paper as crazy good as it is right now, or as it looks right now, you'd think that they'd be better on the field, but it just doesn't really, you know, manifest into those things. So, you know, the Packers, just too much, too many mistakes. You know, the Packers against the Bills and the Commanders, the defense would get an interception, and then the next play, Rodgers threw an interception right back. And for a guy who doesn't throw a lot of picks, it's just, I don't understand it. Um... He, you know, I think he's forcing things a little bit more, but that's what it all comes back to the running game. If you're running the football, setting the tone on the ground, you have A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. And A.J. Dillon, I feel like, doesn't always run behind his pad. Sometimes he runs a little soft. He needs to be more aggressive, needs to run like he's bigger and stronger than everybody. Make them tackle you. I know you're trying to avoid injuries and things of that nature, but 
you can't have Aaron Rodgers back there throwing it 43 times a game like he has this season against, you know, the Giants and the Commanders. I mean, they were winning these games, and he's throwing it 39, 35 times. It's just not the formula for winning, especially when you're throwing it to guys like Amari Rodgers and Sammy Watkins. It's just not going to materialize into a lot for the team. And, you know, then obviously a special teams issue, talking about Amari Rodgers, you can't have a guy back there who fumbled four times, five times this year, seven times in his career, and just keep putting him back there, hoping he's going to... I mean, he never did anything positive in the return game. Nixon comes in for one game, and he's already better. So it's it's crazy, but the Packers wanted to stick with him. They drafted him third round. They thought he could turn into a guy, but it just wasn't where it was. And, you know, in the kicking game, you know, Crosby... He's played well, you know, punting. Pat O'Donnell started out hot, but it seems like he's kind of struggled later in the year now. But Packers just haven't been able to get momentum going. You know, they lost that first game, kind of tough against the Vikings, came back, won three in a row. Then they lost five in a row. Then they won one, lost two, you know, won one, you know. So it's it's been tough. It's been tough to watch. And um, the Packers just... With any hope of this season, with any hope still, they need to figure out how to just stack four more wins together and hope that other teams lose. Um, I mean, it's we're playing against the Dolphins soon, which means Joe Barry's defense has to get it going. You pay a guy $20 million in Jair, highest paid cornerback. Then you pay Douglas $7 million. You drafted Stokes in the first round. You drafted Savage in the first round. And now we play a zone scheme where guys are 10 yards off. I just don't understand it. When you have the guys, you man them up and let them go after it. When you don't have the guys, that's when you play zone because you got to keep everything in front of you. You let stuff, you know, let them complete the pass, but then you come up and make the tackle. Packers just, they don't do anything, you know. And against the Bears, they looked better. But still, it's just this defense needs to be utilized in the way that they're kind of formulated. You know, they have speed and there's... There's guys that can really make a lot of big plays and want to be aggressive. If they want to be aggressive, let them be aggressive. Don't hold them back, you know. So I get it, though, you know. He likes his scheme, but it just doesn't seem like it fits these players. And that's kind of what you have to figure out. Maybe Jim Leonard, who was originally Matt LaFleur's number one pick for defensive coordinator before he signed Joe Barry, maybe he'll bring Jim Leonard in now that Jim Leonard is leaving Wisconsin. We will see. That is something that I'm kind of excited about, maybe getting him in there. But Packers defense, they, you can't go from, you know, being top five on paper to being, you know, 29th in the league and stopping the run and just having so many issues and covering the pass. And you're not giving up a lot of passing yards. They really, I think, are still a tops in the league in, you know, pass defense. But it's because teams can run it so much. And when they do pass it, they're hitting big plays for big yardage or touchdowns. And then they can go back to running the ball. It's just, you know, it, it it doesn't make sense to have so many struggles in so many areas when you have so many guys that are good. And they were, you know, played well last year and the year before and the year before. So, you know, on defense, like I said, it, it doesn't. It's not just one issue. You know, tackling issues have have really plagued us. I know the stat about Campbell, who had only missed four tackles all of last year in his all-pro season, already missed like 20 in the first half of the season this year. Uh, Darnell Savage, we saw his tackling issues, especially against Josh Allen, but they kind of you know moved him to the slot, put Rudy Ford back there, who has played really well, intercepting two passes in his first game. You know, he recovered the fumble last week against the Bears, so... You know, a good a good move there. It seemed like Darnell was getting mixed out of coverage, though, when it was playing zone and trying to work with the other guys just from being playing a different position. He didn't really know where he was supposed to be. I think that's why we got burned on some of those plays against the Eagles. So that kind of was a bummer. But, you know, all in all, 5-8, and eight, Packers still have a sh- chance. They sh- still have a shot. It's going to be close. It's going to be tight. I know there's, you know, like I said, there, with – with Washington, Seattle, Atlanta, in Detroit even. You know, Detroit's right up there with us right now. So it's really up to us to to kind of figure out a way to get healthy during this bye. Hopefully, you know, Devondre Campbell was back, so he's good to go. Romeo Dobbs should be back. He was so close to being able to play against the Bears, but they didn't. he didn't play. So he should be back against the Rams. And 
I mean, for the most part, this will be the healthiest our guys have been because they're given this bye week, which they haven't had. And they just came off a, a 10-day mini-bye when they had um, the Eagles game on, and then the Titans game on Thursday. So, um, or between the Titans and the Eagles game. So they had 10 days. So it's they're going to be good. You know, I think they can, they're going to be rested and ready for this final run. And, it you know, the Packers, obviously, they have to do their part. They have to win all these games. But it comes down to can these other teams help the Packers enough for them to get in. I think Seattle is going to be tough. You know, they're kind of just, they've been kind of the surprise of the, se of the season of the NFC. Um, Giants and Commanders are kind of right there with that tie they had that kind of puts them in a weird spot. But both of them have the tiebreakers. And then you have the Falcons and the Lions, I think, you know, like I said. And, and then even like the, the uh, Panthers, I think, are still kind of close. And so it really is going to be a dogfight and a battle to the finish. But for the Packers, you know, clean up. Uh, some of the tackling issues, you know, some of the play calling, figure out your identity. Those are all the things that I just kept I've been begging for since the beginning of the season. You don't have the firepower on the outside. Now you kind of do with Watson and Dobbs coming back, but now you have four weeks to go. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what this offense looks like when you're at full force and you have your guys playing at high levels. You know, Lazard as a wide receiver one, Watson is like a wide receiver one, two, and then Dobbs is a wide receiver two. I think you can, you have enough firepower there throwing Cobb in the slot that this offense can really look, look good moving forward. Then you have the two running backs in the backfield. So it comes down to executing on offense. Obviously the, the five guys on the offensive line need a block up front and then the defense stepping up when they need to make it big plays and coming, you know, getting after the quarterback and all these things. So hopefully for the Packers, the season doesn't end next Sunday, but we got a bye week this week. It's it's good. It's good for everybody, but there's a lot of work to do here. And, you know, I was hoping to see Jordan Love these final few games because I kind of thought the chances are slim. So it'd be a good opportunity to see what Jordan Love can do. But as long as there is hope, as long as there's a chance, I totally understand keeping Aaron Rodgers out there. And hopefully the Packers can get this W the next four W's actually. So, all right, guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. See you guys next time. Peace out. Go Pack Go.